The Elder Scrolls Online is a massive game that was released in 2014 and has grown a lot since then. Today's video will be my honest review on this game, and I know what you're thinking, that this is like every other review out there covering all the good stuff about this game, but after 6,000 plus hours of playtime, I'll go over the negatives and positives of this game, and some misconceptions that might have been brought up in other videos about this game, and by the end, you will decide if it's worth it for you to get the game and start your journey or not. The first part I wanted to go over is that this game doesn't need a subscription to play like Final Fantasy XIV for example, and it's also not pay to win like other MMOs which I think really makes this a unique game. And negative about this game that I really don't like is that there is not much of a balance with the classes. What I mean by this is that due to how overpowered some classes are, such as Dragon Knight or Arcanist DPS in content, other classes such as Warden and Nightblade DPS are basically banned from some groups and vets depending on the discord you join and even worse in higher end groups, which are really my favorite. This is because those classes sadly don't hit as hard as the meta classes due to consistent nerfing because of PvP, even though a lot of the changes done to them has only hurt them in PvE and made them stronger in PvP ironically. What sucks more is that this is similar for tanks and healers, such as the Dragonite tank is like a must have in every group, but a Blader Warden, again, are almost never seen. Only in like score pushing groups do you really see them sometimes. Note that you can still play these for normal trials and most of the veteran trials trials and some hard modes, but not all. Also, my second mention of the Nightblade and Warden, I was meaning that towards tanks, because you do see Nightblade and Warden healers everywhere, but tank-wise, not so much. Jumping ahead a bit, but I consistently see this part rarely ever talked about in other reviews, and I don't really know why, but trials. Trials are 12 person content that consists of 2 tanks, 2 healers, and 8 DPS. There are 12 trials cleared in the game, consisting of varying numbers of trash pulls and usually 3 boss fights but sometimes it can be more and other times there are some mini bosses. Trials are a huge part of the game. They are really fun and you can make them more challenging by interacting with the hard mode banners. This usually gives the boss a lot more health, damage, and a few extra mechanics for your group to handle. Some of the best gear for all the roles actually comes from trials, so I really recommend you do them in your journey. My recommendations for the level to do them is as follows. For normal trials, I recommend you to be CP or champion point level 160. This is due to the gear capping at 160. For the veteran trials, depending on the trials such as the chapters trial, which are like trials released with the chapters such as Cloud Rest, Sunspire. I recommend doing those around CP 500, maybe 300 at a minimum if you don't want to go to 500. And lastly, for veteran hard modes, I recommend you be at least level 900, preferably 1000 plus. The reason being is that you'll unlock points each time you level up to slot passives. These passives can increase your damage done or give you damage mitigation so you're not as squishy as a grape. I also would like to mention that a lot of these trials, their vets and their hard modes are like night and day difference in difficulty, such as Dread Cell Reef. Note that this is mostly for the chapter trials. Trials such as Craglone trials are beginner friendly, so you don't really need to be a super high level to complete those. But for the others, I really recommend you climb up there. Now you must be thinking, Wow, these numbers seem crazy. And let me tell you, to be honest, it really isn't as bad as it seems because it's really easy to level up in this game. When you start out, I'm sure you'll be questing, which I do recommend you do at least once in your journey. You will get to CP 160 in no time. And just by playing the game more, you can get those higher levels over time. And you can also power level if you wish. For the story, I won't go into a lot of detail because there's a lot of reviews out there that cover that. I wanted to cover the stuff that was missed or rarely mentioned, so I'll keep this part short. The story in this game is honestly well done. Every NPC is voiced, a lot of the quest lines will keep you interested, some of them will provide you with collectibles and skill points even, and this world is massive, so you will be questing for a long time if you wish. I do recommend you to do the main quest line at least once.
A big part that I wanted to cover that might be missed by new people or beginner people that is a lot of the online resources are outdated sadly and some of them have honestly lost their credibility such as Outcast. And I know I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this but it's the truth. All the builds on their website are outdated and I've seen this so many times in discourse that I am in on how badly people get screwed by following their build. They put in the time and effort and gold and get rewarded with nothing. And I can't really blame those people for falling for that because they don't know any better. And I know some of you will probably disagree with me, but to be honest, for those of us who are veteran trial raiders, we can tell first glance just looking at the sets he listed for even tanks, it is so outdated and it really makes me question why they continue to update their website when they don't even play the game anymore. However, there are sources that are really credible, such as Skinny Cheeks if you really want to learn a class, Rai and Charles if you really want to master a class. When starting out, some sets you'll be using to get by are crafted sets. For me personally, the crafting and gathering in this game is kind of boring compared to a game like Final Fantasy XIV for example. I remember the crafting and gathering system in that game being really engaging and required different gear and materials and it made it a lot of fun addicting to me. However, I can't really say the same for the one in ESO, but that doesn't mean you should neglect it. Crafting crafted gear requires you to know traits which you can learn by getting other gear throughout your journey and researching them or from buying them from guild traders and later on when you need to reconstruct gear from the sticker book you will need to know that trait such as the best DPS trait for PvE is divines so you will need to know that to be able to reconstruct that piece in divines so I really suggest you start as soon as you can for this because it does take a long time to get all the traits done even with the passives I recommend really just having one character for this. The final point that I wanted to go over that sets this game apart from other MMOs besides not being pay to win is the combat. I love the combat in this game, it feels so smooth and fluid. I tried other MMO combat systems such as Final Fantasy, Black Desert, Guild Wars, and none of them really compare to ESO's combat in my opinion. I know that a lot of people might disagree with this and that's okay, that is your opinion and I respect that, as this is not meant to trash talk those games or anything because I personally love some of those games. So the question is, is this game worth playing for you starting from now and going forward? Honestly, yes. Despite some of the negatives I mentioned, this game is really well done for the most part, but due to the bugs caused in every patch and the company nerfing classes to the ground sometimes, I'm gonna give this game a 8 out of 10. I hope this video has helped you, and if it did, please consider subscribing. I hope you have a good one.